hi guys welcome back this is a long overdue video and in this video we're going to be critiquing a qualitative research article that one of my subscribers sent to me so let's get into this video i apologize for the delay in uh in uh, producing this video it's been long overdue so quite a number of you guys have left messages have left uh comment asking if i could critique a qualitative research paper and that's what i'm doing today doris even sent a particular uh paper for me to critique but that's not the one i'm critiquing today i'm actually critiquing the one read one sent today but uh doris i will critique your paper as well subsequently well i have to take it one step at a time but i would try to sort you guys out so let's critique this qualitative research paper and you already know different between quantitative and qualitative i presume so to critique a paper i think it's better i just tell you that there is a checklist that you can always use i will leave the link to both the article we're critiquing today and the checklist in the description box box so that you can also maybe print out the checklist check it out it's called the casp checklist i will leave the link to the website in the description box CASP is Critical Analysis Skills Program. This is their checklist, and they have checklists for different things, quantitative, qualitative, trials, so many things, cross-sectional studies, any study, they have a checklist for it. And this is to help you critique uh, the study very well. And that way you won't be wasting your time just reading all through everything and then not getting where you're going. So Let's get into critiquing this particular paper. The paper we're critiquing is this paper on um, views of eating work of challenging precarity. It's a Canadian paper. Uh, this is the Canadian Journal of Sociology and it's quite recent, 2020. So the analysis was done in this pandemic kind of. So literally, we're going to just dive into it. I have put the link in the description box. If you want to follow along, just dive along. I haven't read the paper as such, but I have skimmed it. And I think I have an idea of what it's talking about. The general overview is they're reviewing the views of uh, workers, the precarity, the views of workers that are working in Canada. And those are mostly uh, unskilled workers and how they are being treated in violation of the work ethics and all that so basically that's what this paper is about it's more like a review of an article and uh well it's, it's a qualitative paper but then let's let's use this checklist to uh get an overview of how to critique such a paper this makes it easy this is the easiest easiest hack ever so once you can just use this checklist and you know what you're checking out for that's it but i don't want this video to be too long i don't want it to be more than 15 minutes so let's just be very precise i think there are like 10 checklists there about so we'll go over it one at a time okay so this says was there a clear statement of the aim of the study you have to, you can take either yes can't can't tell no either one and then they've given you an hint on the side as well for things to also check out for. so if you're supposed to critique like you have an you have uh an assignment from school where you're supposed to critique a particular paper a qualitative paper what you have to do is use this in as your guideline to write do you understand so that makes it really easy and it gives you a lot of points so what this one says did they state the aim so let's go to the study the aim can be found anywhere but for this one i found the aim in methodology which was a bit weird but then that's okay they said our aim is to highlight the range of hidden work that employees perform when they attempt to challenge the precarity of their jobs so the aim has been clearly stated so therefore you can always stick the yes checklist here like yes the the aim has been there it's relevance everything was listed there do you understand so that is what that is all about and then move to the next one is a qualitative methodology appropriate so i have the overview of this is the, the info if you really want to get an in-depth detail you can read it all through but i don't want this video to be boring okay so 
a qualitative is appropriate for this. And why do I say that? Because they want to hear the views of different workers. Experiences can never be the same. And basically what they want here is the experience of each person to be able to analyze if this precarity thing is a thing as, as more, like if this uh, eating work is a thing with workers where they have to do so much or they have to tolerate a lot when they are working. Do you understand? So I think it is appropriate because they are trying to gather experiences, you see. So always use the ins as a way to assess. So it's qualitative right for the methodology. I think it's, it's perfect for it because it's talking about experiences. Do you understand? And then the third, the third um, checklist is, was the research design appropriate to address the aim of the study? So if the researcher has justified the research design, have they discussed how they decided which method to use? Like I said earlier, if you're writing an essay, this really helps you. You just have to write around this point. Do you understand? Was the research design appropriate to address the aims of the research? When I went through it, unfortunately, they, well, the research design is appropriate. You can always critique the des design we will get to what design was used shortly, but they did not specifically state why they were using that particular design, okay? So that moves me to the next point where, where I will join it all together for you, okay? So that is, was the recruitment strategy appropriate? No, that's not a minute though. Okay, number, I will link three, four, and five together. Was the recruitment strategy appropriate to the research to the aim of the research so how were they recruited so if we check we just go straight to methodology that's where you find all those recruitment uh, details so on the methodology now how were they recruited they were recruited uh, based on uh, uh, an advert see workers were recruited through poster advertisements newspaper advertising and referrals from community organization. So you can always say that this is voluntary. This is basically a voluntary, uh, a voluntary thing. You can either go or not. So it's not as if they were screened or there was randomization. So those are ways to critique. There was no randomization. It was just uh, an advert. But was that the right way to get it? So you have to decide if that was the right method for them to have used. So how do you decide that? You check other, you can critique based on other articles that are written about how to get people's experiences, how to get people to uh, the best method, the best way, the uh, the less biased way. That's the way to critique it. The less biased way to get people to sign up for this thing or to like, basically when you want to carry out your research you want there to be randomization but in some cases you might not be able to achieve that which is like in this case so just critique it that way and then you'll be able to pass your information i really do not want to waste time on this thing. i just want to give you an overview so maybe the next critique then we can spend quite a lot of time so now the fifth one so was the data collected in a way that addressed the research issue in the first place how was the data collected let's first decide that how was the data collected so if you come here and you check how the data was collected was they said it was based on 77 interviews were conducted but how did they collect those 77 interviews so after recruitment workers completed a semi-structured interview and questionnaire was used so what do you do you critique a semi-structured uh, semi-structured interview and then you critique questionnaire that means you write their pros you write their cons everything put it there it doesn't mean it is bad it just means this was what they used and was it appropriate was the questionnaire appropriate did they test that questionnaire all those things are the are the things that you have to talk about so was the data collected in a way that addressed the issue so obviously you read through it, like how did they collect it, the semi-structured questionnaire, how was it done, all that. So you write about it. These are the points to consider. So if you look at all these points, all these points will guide you as to what you do. So number six says, has the relationship between researchers and participants been adequately considered? 
I went through the study and I don't think so. Like it wasn't explicitly written, even if it was done. Like did they examine their own role in relation to bias and all that? They didn't write it out. So you can't tell. That is what you pick. You can't tell. It's not you're not wrong for saying that because honestly, we can't tell. So I went through it and I couldn't tell what was done because it wasn't written. So another way to get idea of that is probably email the person who conducted the research asking and then if they reply then you can use that as your answer okay have ethical issues been taken into consideration yes if you read through the paper ethical issues were taken into consideration uh consent was sought ethics committee approved the research and all that so you write about it all use the ins so I would take the yes box, ethical issues were taken into consideration. So was the data analysis sufficiently rigorous? So here now you go in depth. So if there, if there is an in-depth description of the analysis process, yes, there is an in-depth description. If you go through the paper, I don't know if I'll be able to find it now. If you go through the paper, you see here, here, right here, how data collection and analysis was influenced by narrative analysis. And you know, there are different types of, um, there are different ways to analyze a critical, uh, a qualitative paper rather. You know, it could be either uh, the historical analysis, it's, um, phenomenological, so many others like that. So if you can check them out, but here it's been explicitly stated that the, narrative analysis was used which i think is brilliant so you can easily just go and tick that box and if you want to write around it you just use this as your guide and then to my ninth point oh sorry where's number nine now is there a clear statement of findings oh there was loads of because it's narrative so the way they report it is they do report their speeches direct reporting everything was done in here so if you go to how it was narrated see all this now is uh what the people they interview said for celeste playing dumb at work and um see this one said despite the familiarity blah 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 she said they quoted her this was what she said so everything was duly reported if you read the paper very well everything absolutely everything was duly reported so just use this as your guide and look for the answers within the paper that is the easiest way so that way you're not missing the point and you're you're not missing the valuable points and you're not just writing or uh, Avazadly. So how valuable is the research? If you read it, I, I think the research is pretty much valuable. It's actually uh, taking into consideration disadvantaged people and people that are unskilled, like less skilled. So uh, that way, I think it's quite valuable to the community and to the entire Canadian community in general, because it's based on so many things. See here, it says if they identify new areas where research is necessary. So they identified several things that needs reform that can be found like towards the end part of it where they said there's a need for reform. There's a need for a lot of things to be done and all that. So all that should be included in this study and the good thing is they highlighted all that and they were able to like list it out and all so if you read through it very well you will find it and that was towards the end it's usually towards the discussion area which i think is absolutely 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 brilliant i'm trying to see if i can get uh any of the points they made okay so the analysis in this paper suggests that I see their conclusion that eating work, which is routinely part of precarious employment, needs to be recognized by the state, which they investigate ESA violations. So they have given recommendations, they have said to places to check, things to look out for, and all that, which I think is absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So that is like everything. So just use the CASP ins as your guideline, and you can do no wrong, trust me. All right, guys, so that is all I have for you today. I've said I wasn't going to spend more than 15 minutes and time is almost up. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this video, for listening to me. Use this guide and I promise you that everything would be sorted. And subsequently, I will answer all your questions and then make videos about the things you guys wanted to make videos about. There are loads of them. So 
don't worry i will keep you updated every saturday till i see you guys again make sure you put a smile on somebody's face okay and i hope you have subscribed